we're live once again third time ever i i have to mention that because uh i'm gonna try to go a little ambitious this time so hopefully nothing will go too wrong i hope i hope um so we're gonna be talking about uh, a lot of really cool interesting things today we're gonna be trying some new things you might be seeing a little bit of a sneak peek of that in the mirror over there but i'm just gonna as always wait for a few people to roll in if you want to skip to about the three minute mark, if you're watching this as a uh, playback, then uh, then you can do that if you're impatient and you don't want to hear me ramble for a little bit. But I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be uh, covering today, which I'm really excited about because um, I always wanted to do kind of a live session where I could show a little bit of my timelines, what I was, um, you know, how I how I edit stuff. And, um, and, and hopefully that'll be interesting to you guys. Let me see if I can. Man get some jams going in here. I, I can't hear anything, so hopefully you guys can enjoy that. Um, that song from Artlist, by the way. Bam, look at that, we even got their logo. Getting, getting real fancy. Uh, you can find their link in the description if you wanna you know, get some, uh, some great music for your videos. I don't know if this is too loud, let me, let me lower it down just in case. So we're talking about um, you know an edit that I've done not too long ago, and I will show it in just a second. It's, uh, it's a trailer essentially for a new workshop that I'm doing, which is um, a, an editing workshop. So of course, I wanted to make sure that the, that the editing uh, was, uh, you know what? Let me lower this song a little bit more. I feel like the levels are getting a little too crazy. And let me just, let me just get rid of it because I, I can't play like that live. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Let me see if I can pull up the chat real quick. Low audio. Let me let me try to bump myself up a little bit more. Can you guys hear me better now? Hopefully that will be. Hopefully that's uh, that's good. All right. The video is jaggy. The video is jaggy. Hmm. You know what? I might have to pull the plug on something a little bit of a surprise that I wanted to give you guys. Um, yeah, let me pause that render. I have After Effects rendering something in the background because that's how last minute this all is. So I had to I had to pause it real quick because uh, yeah, that was slowing the whole live stream down. So I apologize for that. Um, so anyways, let me just show you the clip because uh, I've been doing enough rambling. And uh, this way we, we know what we're talking about and what we're gonna be looking at. Um, so keep in mind, we're gonna be looking at the timeline in Premiere Pro of how I've made the trailer that you are about to watch. If I can find it. There it is. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, so I guess we can get started. And today's topic is going to be how to how I edited the trailer that you just watched. So how to edit a trailer. All right. So welcome to this third live stream. My name is Chris Trini, and uh, we're gonna get started on this. I'm super excited. I can't wait to share with you uh, some of the things that I, uh, I did in this uh, in this trailer. And uh, it's gonna be my first time sharing my Premiere Pro timeline live. So I'm a little nervous about that, but hopefully you guys can find some uh, useful information in there that you're going to enjoy. So there's a few things that I have planned for this live stream. Hopefully it all goes well. We're gonna divide the uh, breakdown of the trailer that you watched in two parts. 
So we're going to look at a little bit at um, some of the layout, some of the steps that I usually take when cutting something of that nature. And then uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break, which is actually going to be a new uh, segment that I'm going to be trying. And uh, hopefully it's not completely random. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that too. But that's going to be coming up. And then after that, we're going to jump back in to the, um, to the edit. And we're going to look at a few things in sound design and a few other tricks. And, and then we're just going to, you know, just talk a little bit about it and see if there's any other questions. So let me see if I can jump in and uh, and share Premiere Pro. Let's see if this works. All right. Not bad, not bad. And you guys can see me in the bottom there. Great, 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 good stuff. So this is essentially the main timeline of the trailer. So it's not nothing too fancy, not a lot of... Uh, some people are saying low audio still. Can you hear me better now? Hopefully, hopefully that's still not an issue. Let me know in the chat if the audio is still low for you guys. If you can hear me all right, it should be it should be all right. I'm seeing the meters okay, but let me know. So we have our timeline here, and uh, let me just make a little bit of room so you guys can properly see everything that's going on here. Um, could probably get rid of this panel for now make a little bit of room all right so you can see uh, that there's not a lot of craziness going on but you can see that there's like some very specific choices in terms of sound design and uh, and we're gonna be talking about um, everything okay people are saying audio is good great 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 so so this is the the stuff that we're gonna cover more in part two and the first part I just wanted to talk a little bit about the cuts and and just some ideas that I had going into this um, so there's there's a few things I think that you should keep in mind whenever you're you're uh, you're going into an edit of this nature. With trailers, it's really easy to get carried away and just have a bunch of quick chops and you know just have some really high energy pumping music. And a lot of people think that that's really all there is to it. But I think that um, if you have a more kind of just a better understanding of the story and the piece that you're trying to say, and if you try to communicate that in the trailer. I think that makes things a lot more interesting for the viewer. So, you know, give it a direction. Make sure that you are, um, you know, you're, you're following a certain uh, progression. You know, you don't want things to just happen randomly. Things need to kind of glue in together. They need to make sense uh, with each other. So each clip, just like in editing, just like editing a normal short, it kind of needs to have a, a relationship with the previous and with the following clip. So with that in mind, I uh, usually lay out a, um, a just selection of clips and um, and then from there I will pick the best ones and I will start ordering them into whatever sequence I think makes sense so by the way this is uh, this is probably one of the worst timelines to look at because it's I'm, I'm realizing that I didn't prep this for the live stream it's just very unorganized and and uh, yeah not very polished but it's because I edited this in uh, just a very short amount of time and didn't really have much time to color code anything. So this is a bad example for that, but some of the ideas are still here. Um, you just want to make sure that you are, um, you're, you're, again, you're, you're giving it an A to B to C point. And um, <laughs> nice. I'm, I have the chat open and my thoughts below says, finally caught one. Yes. Glad to have you on the live stream. All right, so um, another thing that, that you want to keep in mind is to not only stick with a direction, but stick with a type of pacing. So let me just jump back in to, wow, having two screens is kind of confusing. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to just talk a little bit about the theory. And hopefully, I won't bore you guys too much because uh, I, I think this stuff is really important. You can know how to make the cuts. You can know how to do all that stuff, but if you don't have some ideas, you know, then, then you're kind of lost in that regard. So I, I think that having a pacing for the overall piece and, uh, and this doesn't mean that everything needs to be at the same rhythm, but if you know the type of mood that you're trying to communicate and, uh, and if you give it, um, you know, a certain pa a pace and then it could swell up, it could have crescendos, it could have some dip down, some calmer moments. Those are all things that can add a lot of impact to, uh, to what you're doing. Again, nothing has to be high energy all the time or quiet all the time. You can have these moments of ups and downs and these swings that you control in your edit 
But um, what I mean by keeping the same type of pace is that you can you can alter the pacing or you can you can alter the the momentum of it. But in terms of the overall flow of it, it all needs to fit together. It can't feel like one style of editing that jumps into another style of editing that jumps into another one. Uh, you you kind of want to keep things cohesive a bit and you want to glue things together uh, while still keeping it dynamic. You don't want things to be sort of uh, like flat momentum wise or edit wise. You want to keep things moving and progressing and having that kind of oscillation in your edits in terms of like momentum, that's what really drives moments to go from you know really quiet to like in your face like very impactful and and that's that's another great way of uh retaining people's attention throughout something that you're trying to communicate in in your trailer so let me just play a little bit through it and then i'll just i'll just comment as we go so let me try to make this a little bit bigger Okay, so it, it, it's way too laggy to really get anything from it, but I do want to mention in this first part, um, so the, the first section is just a bunch of quick cuts that match with the, with the music that we're introducing, so nothing too fancy. The first kind of visual uh, trigger, the first visual thing that grabs you is this section right here in the beginning where we kind of uh, have this quick zoom in into the scale and position properties uh, of the clip and then we have this kind of pan to the side that matches that matches the uh, the camera movement so all of these things are kind of uh, you know like just just things to keep it moving but also that makes sense with the actual shot that was there and that feel uh, somewhat connected so it's not just you know like scaling up and then pushing it these are actual transitions that still feel like a real camera is there which is why they match so well with the shot that follows it. And uh, by the way, if you guys are interested, this is a pack that you can get. Uh, these transitions, uh, these are like part of a huge um, a huge pack that I overviewed uh, last week in the last live stream. So if you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave a link. They're, they're already in the description so you can check them out or you can check out last live stream where I talk about uh, 10 assets and plugins that you should definitely get as an editor. Um, so that was one of them. And that's where I got these transitions. And now I want you to notice something that here, there's a, uh, a version of this clip right here that is reversed. So we start pulling out and then we, you know, motivated by this hand gesture, we move back in. And we reveal the first title card, which is make edit step flow. So of course the title kind of calls back with the clothing and how it drapes and how it's flowing and all of that. So it's, it's matching up in that sort of sense. Then we move forward and we have, so this is, this is actually uh, a cut or different cuts that were in this original fashion um, commercial that I edited and just going frame by frame, we have, there was a similar moment in the track of this piece as well. So it's, it's gonna, um, it's just gonna follow those cuts. So right now we have kind of like a higher pitch, like voice that's going like eh, 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 and it just cuts following that that sound there's another cut there's another cut there's another cut but here's the thing that is i think unique to this moment is that the same style of cutting repeats for a few frames in the following shot that we're leading into so you can see there's a cut there, there's a cut there and then it ends with the person actually like stepping into the shot so once the foot lands which we, it's, it's off screen, but you can tell by the way that the clothed ripple, once that foot lands, that's when we get the, the, the main kick that kind of launches the song forward. So we have this buildup that sounds like this. So you can hear the, the choppiness of that leading up moment. And then once the, the main impact hits, we want a, an important moment. So now we're, we're establishing, okay, we've done this transition. Now the transition's over, and now we've introduced this new clip. Now, another thing that I do all the time to make things kind of glue together into, again, that, that I don't know if it's the right way of explaining it, but the, the oscillation of the momentum, that sounds like really convoluted, but 
the way to keep it fluctuating, I guess, is to play a lot with time, um, time remapping and all that good stuff. So you can see here that we go, we go from quick cuts into slow-mo. And then I want you to notice, I'm going to play just this last section. You can see that it's, it ramps up, it speeds up. And, and that follows a sound effect right here, which is this kind of build up in sound. And we're going to look at sound design more in depth, but you can see how it's matching up with that, that build up. And then right before the cut, we just speed up into the cut. And now, um, this leads me to another another way of motivating cuts is to have to just really pay close attention to the the movement that is happening in your shot. So for this one, we have him rotating, so it matches up in a similar uh, direction with um, this this wheel spinning and, and just the general movement of the car moving in that same sort of direction. Uh, you can see that here it kicks up dirt, so you know we have some sound to match that. But again, just to make it, the main thing that makes this smooth and that makes this cut work is the direction of the subjects in, in either clip. So there we go. Uh, and then we just cut to this other shot of the car going. And now this, this is where another transition happens. And we go from here to our other scene where there's a similar pan going on and we reveal these soldiers moving into this location. So again, obviously the clips were picked from previous work that, I, that I've done or that I've uh, worked on that, that were visually striking. So I figured like, you know, going from a exotic car in this really cool hangar uh, looking location would make sense for, for this kind of exterior. Now you might've caught in just a few, in just a few frames right here that it's not exactly a, a, an in-camera pan in between the two cuts. This is again part of that transition pack that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, okay, there's <laughs> text messages popping up. Let me quit that. Bam. Um, so yeah, that's that's essentially the main thing to to keep in mind when when creating spectacles. You want to have things that that not only just work together, but that visually kind of match uh, match well together too. So we have the soldiers. Okay, there's still. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of the messages, so you're going to be reading my messages for this live stream. There we go. Um, let's see. So then from here, um, we'll talk about more in sound, but there's there's not really something that visually ties these together, but there's more of a sound that ties these together. And I'll just play it here. So you can, you're can you going to hear a helicopter that kind of uh, passes over, and then it develops into this higher pitch ringing type of sound which matches with the light reflecting into the lens of the next shot. There we go. So it, it, I can't play it um, smoothly because it's not rendered, but you can see how we heard the, the helicopter and then it just kind of develops into this higher pitch ring. And then we, we cut to, uh, to this sort of big flare that engulfs our scene. And then, um, we have a jump cut motivated by the snare, and then he enters the the water, and we have another one of those transitions, which kind of like zooms into the water, and now we follow our our uh, subject underwater. The sound changes, and we'll look into the sound in a bit, and then we have this this animation. In, um, that I made an After Effects of. Essentially just the same, you can see it's the same timeline. I just took a screenshot, I animated this uh, this timeline indicator, and um, the timeline indicator also reveals the next title card, which is sound design. And then uh, something that happens here is the shot of the subject underwater reverses as the playhead of our timeline gets animated backwards. So it's kind of to match that editing vibe in Premiere. And that is also used to motivate a wipe to uh, to get rid of that stuff. And then we fade into our next clip, which is a bunch of chess pieces um, that are floating up in slow-mo to reveal our next title card. And some of these chess pieces that are closer to the foreground are rotoscoped so that they appear in front of the text. Nothing too mind-blowing, nothing too complex. It's just 
you know, simple things that I think if you use uh, well in, in a certain context or, you know, if you know how to fit them together, they, they can seem a lot bigger than what they actually are. And then here we have a few uh, jump cuts, which leads into the, uh, the cards overlay. And something that I want you to notice here is that there's cuts here, but there's no cuts once the cards come in. And that is because if you listen to the sound, I'll just play the sound alone. I don't know if you can hear this, this high-pitched ticking. It's like, and then it slows down. So it's, so it, it actually goes, well, I did it wrong. It's like, so it's like those first ticks that are slower, they motivate the jump cuts. Then once it goes into like, we saw cuts, this is going to sound so weird. And then the faster, we start seeing the deck of cards being flicked. So every, every card that comes out is timed to match with one of those faster tick, ticking sounds. And then um, as it slows down, um, as it slows down, it'll just kind of, the cards will slow down as well. And that's what leads us into the other shot. Now, one of the last few ticks also motivates the next overlay of our timeline. The tick after that does a straight cut to it where we're now going towards the uh, speed and duration tab. And then there's a click from the song as well as a click, like a sound effect click of a mouse. And that's just creating all these jump cuts that where we're you know cutting closer and closer into all these parameters, which is reverse time. And then once we do that, the song actually, you can see that there's a, uh, there's a cut here. And this section of the song is just the same I think it's like four bars or something that I've just cut and reversed. So as soon as we hit reverse for the video, the song also reverses. And uh, of course, we're talking about manipulating time. So there's a there's a real slow-mo shot. And um, to really sell that slow-mo shot, we have the text kind of expanding. Uh, the, the tracking of the text expands over. Uh, another similar trick that to what we saw earlier, this goes from slow motion and then it speeds up near the uh, near the end so there you go it starts really speeding up and you can really tell by the text because it starts to kind of it starts just going at a certain speed and then it, at the end it really kind of starts expanding much quicker which highlights that moment uh, another thing too that that highlights that that specific moment is some of the sound uh, and and I just want to make a note of that because we're going to go back into all the sound. But we have, a, we have a sound that leads into the next scene, which has the same sound played in normal speed. So we have a reverse version of that that plays into the normal version, which is that typical like airplane ding that you hear. So at first you hear it reverse, and then it's normal. It's like, and then that's that, that ping gives us that straight cut into a cockpit of an airplane and uh, and this still in my head um, kind of made sense because um, because uh, sorry I just saw just saw a random <laughs> comment that's uh, Brandon B says hey can you give me a camera so I can start creating good content I wish man I wish I could give out cameras that'd be nice uh, but I I can't but if you are using a phone to type this, you can probably use that phone to go and shoot something awesome. So that's my tip for the day for that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the cockpit, the reason why this kind of follows the manipulating time is because when you think of manipulating time in an edit, you think of all these dials and things. So that's why it goes into the cockpit, which there's a, there's a lady in there playing with, with the dials, which I thought matched in terms of what, what I was visually seeing in my head when I hear manipulating time. And then over here we have that uh, that text, which is just a simple After Effects animation. You go under the text parameters, you just go under Animate, and I think it's called Character Offset. If you can animate the range of that Character Offset, it's what gives you random letters, and then once it reaches zero, it gives you those your actual letters. The reason why this text is doing that is uh, is because um, the terminal things. You know, if you ever seen those old school terminals that have the uh, the 
the letters kind of flip and then they form the destination or whatever flight you're going on. I don't know. It's a little old school terminal airport thing that I thought would be a, a cool like way to call to that with uh, with the text in this scene. Then we have an overlay that wipes into the another shot inside the cockpit. Here we have oh, a shot that's really hard to render because there's a lot of keyframes on there. Not a lot of keyframes, but it's the, the rotation dial that you saw. There it is, that one. Uh, it rotates, uh, and it's just the uh, rotation parameter in Premiere, and that matches with this shot, which is also rotating in that same direction and same speed. And then the very last part of the, of, of this edit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play the whole thing by the end of this if you're watching live, so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. But so you can see that we have a cut first, and then there's a stronger moment where he actually flips the switch. Now I didn't want to just cut straight to the switch flipping, which is something that you know you, you're you're kind of. Um, I don't know, like it, your first instinct is to cut on the beat, cut on that action. But really, if you cut just a moment before and then you you have just a few just a few frames to understand what's visually going on, then your eyes go to the hand. Then we see that very important moment of of the switch going up, uh, motivated, of course, by sounds and all that good stuff. But at least now you have a little bit of time to, you know, get your bearings in the scene and then seeing what's really important. And then we see the action. Um, So yeah, there we go. That's it's just essentially this is a real camera move. I didn't do anything in the edit. It just the camera just kind of moves over on a gimbal towards the uh, track where this box is coming out of, and then I, there's another title card that's revealed by that that movement, which says discover all the secrets because we don't know what's in that box. So that that made sense to me, and you know we have a a figure of authority standing by it at the end, almost like a gatekeeper. And in my head, it was just kind of saying like, okay, well, there's been a lot of editors, there's been a lot of people that have done this and that are even probably better than me but at, at this, but that haven't really shared this information. So it's almost like these locked in secrets and this, I don't know, that's kind of the idea with it all at the end here. And then here we have the, the main title of the workshop, which is essentially, I just went in After Effects and I started typing the title and I screen recorded it. And then I, I made some edits there we go here to match it with the song in Premiere. So pretty similar things towards the end with the logo and everything else. And um, let me just go back to the camera since I'm getting more messages. That's it. That's pretty much the, the timeline of it. We're going to look at the um, sound design a little bit. And we're also going to jump into some uh, some some questions that you guys might have. But first, I, I want to try something a little bit different. And uh, I don't know if this is going to be super random, but you know, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about that aren't really film related. They're just some news and some interesting things that I found recently. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to try that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can let's see if I can set this up. This is all going to be live. So I'm not sure. Never done this before. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna play the trailer because I can't find what I was looking for. But this is what the trailer looks like once it's all uh, completed.
there we go. So hopefully that made sense uh, now that you saw the breakdown and then you saw the final video. Um, yeah, it was honestly a lot of fun and there's there's just a lot of little things here and there that I think can just be applied to a lot of other things and uh, and, and just make edits flow a little bit better. Some of these things you can even use in normal edits. It doesn't have to be necessarily a trailer. But all right, so I think I have that uh, that thing set up. So I'm just going to... I'm going to see if all this works. I'm trying this live, so I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to I'm going to try to do this, all right? Just just uh, bear with me if it doesn't work. Don't don't judge. Okay. All right, um, so let's get started on this week's episode of A Few Points On. And this is just gonna be a place where we can uh, talk about some news, some some trends or some ideas that we just uh, wanna learn about and just have a conversation. So hopefully you will enjoy this random little break and, uh, and we can talk about it more in the live chat or if you're watching this as a playback, uh, we can uh, you know have a conversation in the comments section below. So let's begin with our first story. And that is uh, Obama gets his own TV show. And this was just recently announced that uh, both Barack and Michelle Obama have signed a multi-year deal with Netflix to both produce and appear in front of camera. This is this is kind of huge and, and not a lot of detail has been released yet from either party, but Netflix did say that the type of content that they envision is uh, very diverse and can include anything from scripted series to feature films to docu-series and documentaries. And I think that this is an amazing step for both Netflix and, and the world because you, you can disagree or agree with Barack Obama as president, but I think that uh, most people can agree that he demonstrated to have uh, a great great values as a man, as an individual, as a father. So I'm really curious and I'm really excited to see where this goes because I know that the graying on his hair during his presidency was also probably because he wished he could have done a lot of things that in the position as president, unfortunately he wasn't able to do. So in a weird way, Netflix as a platform can, can give the Obamas much more needed uh, independence and freedom to divulge new ideas and strong values for a world that I think right now uh, desperately needs it. All right, so the next story is uh, GDPR. What is GDPR? You probably see it on emails or on websites. Well, in a nutshell, it's a European law to regulate the widespread business model uh, of companies that sell personal data to other businesses. And it, it makes sense that this is all starting in Europe because uh, people there have a deep distrust of governments with too much control over their security and you know their own privacy. So it's no coincidence that even though most Germans have access to the internet, only 37% of them use social media, which is kind of, kind of mind-blowing. So this is all happening as a result of the uh, Facebook scandal, which uh, it's kind of weird calling it that. I feel like most people using Facebook knew what was going on behind the scenes. I mean, you have to be pretty dense to not notice all of the ads that are specifically targeted to you. Uh, or you could be a kid that doesn't know any better, which is why I think that some of these uh, measures and regulations are important to talk about. So this is this is pretty big, actually. And, uh, and these uh, new regulations could have a, a huge economic impact uh, to companies like Google or Facebook, which, I mean, selling data to marketers and companies is essentially their, their business model, their, their bread and butter. So a lot of businesses are now converting their privacy policy and providing more disclosure information on how they will use your information that they're collecting uh, either while on their, on, on their own site or after you the site. And a lot of the bigger players mentioned before are complying fast. And that's because uh, the, the fees that this law brings are kind of crazy and it could be devastating. We're talking about 20 million euros or 4% of the global uh, revenue generated the prior year from that company. And that is a fee that is reoccurring every day that they don't comply. So that's, that's a lot even for Google or for Facebook. And then finally, the, the final story that I want to talk about, I'll grab my phone. Um, I, I recently stumbled upon a video from H3H3. I don't know if you guys know them. Uh, I, I love their, their, their channel and their podcast is great. Uh, so, so Ethan here, he has a bit of a, a bit of a rant video on YouTube's uh, latest 
um, changes that they're that they're going to be doing, and this might be affecting you and how you consume content. So I figured it'd be interesting uh, just just talking about it a little bit. So uh, the the video is very dramatically called "If YouTube Does This, It's Doomed," and he has a few good points. But I must say that for the most part, I kind of disagree with him. So um, it's not a long video. We're only going to look at different sections of it. So um, I just wanted to give you my, my honest opinion about this since a lot of people are talking about it. So this evening I'm browsing Twitter and I see somebody complaining to Team YouTube, a pretty typical complaint. Why aren't the videos in my subscription feed chronological order anymore? This is the kind of thing you see all the time. People complaining that the sub feed is broken. But this time, Team YouTube actually answered, and here's what they said. Just to clarify, we are currently experimenting with how to show content in the sub feeds. We find that some viewers are able to more easily find the videos they want to watch when we order the sub feeds in a personalized order versus always showing most recent videos first. So, okay, right there, that's, that's the main issue, which I don't really think is that much of an issue. It's just a YouTube change, uh, which could have some other implications to it, but but what they're saying is true. You know, they, they, their main goal is to make YouTube a more enjoyable experience so that you can watch more videos so that, you know, that you're essentially staying in YouTube. It's against their interest to give you an experience that, uh, that doesn't cater for that and that would push you away from YouTube as a platform. So that's why I don't think that if they do any sort of change of this nature, they're going to be doomed in any way because Everything that they're that they're making uh, in terms of policy changes or any of that, it's to improve the platform. It's just in their own interest. They're not going to do something against the viewer or that would annoy them to the point that, you know, they have they have smart people thinking about this stuff. I'm pretty sure it's not some guy coming up with it and then it's gonna you know bite them later. Uh, but I, I do see the concern because again, Instagram uh, did this. And it was very annoying because I, I would much rather see what is more recent and, and you know the latest kind of news instead of seeing what is just becoming more relevant or more popular. Uh, but let's just keep watching. They're finally doing it, you guys. They're finally taking the sub feed. It was the last thing we had, the last sacred piece of YouTube left that wasn't optimized. They've changed notifications. There's now three tiers of notifications. Now the notification bell has Notify me sometimes. Whatever happened to ringing that bell, dude? Notification <laughs> okay. sometimes? Um, I mean, it is a little annoying. Before it would just be subscribe and you're subscribed and that's it. With these changes, you're gonna have to take extra steps, but that is something that you only do once. You know, if you really like the content on the channel, you hit the bell notification and you actually set the preference as far as how much of that content you wanna, you know, you wanna watch. And uh, and we're gonna talk about in, in a, just a few minutes, like a little bit of a hack against this new algorithm that's going to take place, which is so intuitive, but we're, we're going to talk about it in just a second. Notifications sometimes? Isn't that what subscribing is? If somebody smashes that bell, you better damn well show them my video. But no, not anymore. A bell smash isn't enough. A subscription isn't enough anymore. Why is YouTube obsessed with making it harder and harder for subscribers to get your content? And now being subscribed on the sub feed, which was the one sacred place you could find the content you're subscribed to in chronological order is now being optimized. I'll tell you what optimized means. It means YouTube finally now has full control over what content you see. It means that people who are subscribed. Okay, so uh, he, he goes on in the video and I would recommend you guys uh, watching the video after you see this. Just to, just to hear his full opinion, but he goes on pretty much on these main points that he just established. And I, I see the concern, and that is something that I also am concerned about. Um, again, I don't think that YouTube would do anything drastic enough to hurt itself or, you know, the, the, the viewers, which is their, essentially the, the foundation of their business model. But I see the concern because we've seen something very similar happen with the trending tab where, you know, all of a sudden you have late night shows and all of these uh, very like corporate entities that are appearing all of a sudden magically at number one uh, when there is actual good content that people want to see that's uh, not prioritized in that way. And that is clearly, you know, almost I think it's done in a paid way. There's some kind of agreement, like a backdoor type of deal. It's not like weird conspiracy thing. It's just, I think that's just how it works because looking at the numbers alone, it just doesn't make sense. 
So I see the concern, um, especially with the rise of the Paul brothers and, and you know, the, the preference that YouTube gave uh, to creators that essentially weren't promoting, I think, good values, but that were making entertainment, they were generating a lot of views. So there's that whole corporate, uh, you know, and, and that, that kind of preference game side of it all that I, I absolutely see that that could be a, a, a huge concern. But this leads me to my final point about this whole situation, and then we can just jump back into it. I don't know when it's going to officially uh, launch and roll out, but the best thing that you can do is to uh, select through the notification bell what, you know, subscribe channels you want to watch and actually watch those channels because everything now is driven by watch time. So if you want to see the creators that you love, all you have to do is watch their content. And uh, I think that that's all there is really to the story. I think it's just a way of, uh, of you know, giving you stuff that will stand out to you, that you will actually enjoy out of the clutter of the many subscriptions that even myself that I have on my YouTube page. So I think that that could be good in a way if done right. Again, I see the concerns and I'm personally going to be uh, negatively impacted by this change because uh, mine is an educational channel. You know, it's not really entertainment. I don't I, I can't upload daily. It would be impossible for me to do that. So channels like myself and other ones are going to be hit really hard by this. So I can I can see, you know, how this is not a great thing for everyone. But even in that position, just from the consumer side of things, I can see how this can be a positive change. All right. That is it for just a, a few points on. Uh, this is uh, it's different. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But uh, let's just jump back to the to the rest of the live stream. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that was obvious or not. I think a few people caught it. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that. Um, I hope I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found the stuff that that I found uh, interesting. Uh, I definitely think that there is, um, you know, it's something I want to keep doing, but maybe maybe a little bit shorter or something. I don't know. Let let me know what you guys think, and uh, I definitely want to keep these going in the in the live streams and just try different things. I, I really want to build these up to be kind of like a show. So hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed that and it wasn't all too random. Um, all right. So what I'm gonna do is. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to do literally like just a few more minutes of some of the sound design in in, in the edit because that would that played a big part in really gluing all those pieces together for the editing workshop trailer. And and then we're just going to do some uh, some live Q&A at the end. It could be anything about this topic or anything in general that you want to ask. So just start thinking about that and, and start posting them. I'll, I'll see them and I'll address them as soon as I can. But for now, let's uh, let's just jump back into Premiere. And in here, I'm just going to go from the top and I'm just going to show you just the sound design of uh, what was involved in, in this trailer. Now, I didn't really have time to do much sound uh, mixing or EQing or any of that. I did just very basic amount of it. Uh, so a lot of it just comes from, from the placement of the sounds themselves. And um, if I had more time, I definitely would have played with things like reverb uh, and things like that. And, and I'm, I'm probably going to do that probably tonight because I'm going to post the trailer tomorrow so you can see it um, not in a live stream form but as its own thing but so starting off here let's see at the very top here we have the song coming in now there's a there's a cut in the song and what I usually do with with the music that I put into almost any edit whether it's a trailer or my YouTube videos or anything like that I usually edit the songs so it, any song is going to have its own BPM. It's going to have its own rhythm. So if you kind of mentally count the, the bars of each track, uh, you can kind of make cuts that can tie in seamlessly the intro of a song with the, you know, the breakdown at the end of it or with the drop in the beginning. So with counting the beats and just cutting at the exact point where the beat drops or where the kick comes in or whatever the case may be, uh, that is... Um, sorry, let me just disable... There's like a screen saving thing. All right, so that is essentially a way to cut music in a way that doesn't sound like it's being interrupted or anything weird like that. So that's kind of what I did here. Moving on, I have, it's gonna be a hard timeline to, there we go. Um, we have some sounds in the beginning here for these uh, 
the zoom in, we have a whoosh sound effect. This is from the Motion Pulse uh, sound library. And then here we have some some mech type of style, like some, uh, I guess you, you could call it some transformer style sounds that are just some some moving parts, some some mechanics that are that are going on. And uh, and that is all cut and with with multiple sounds so that it is synced up with whenever I move in and I click on scale on the stopwatch and when I move up and I click on the position stopwatch. So you can see that these are all happening in sync with that. And then there's a final, um, it's like a tech kind of riser over here that kind of glues in all of these initial moments here to this, this build up to a pan. So we have two layers. We have the, the kind of the techier side that has this kind of like underbed to it over here with this sound. And then we have the stronger uh, whoosh uh, sound effect, which sells this final moment of the, of the pan leading into the next scene. Then we have another whoosh that matches up with the, with the movement inside your scene. Um, and that's something like a quick little, a quick little note that I want to make here is whenever you're, you're going into uh, sound designing, I think it's nice to layer it and to think of it in different layers. So the first layer could be, okay, I want to like, I, I want to add any sound that I see in the scene. So that, that last part could be an example, you know, the moving of the, of the jacket could be, okay, that's a sound effect that I see and I want to hear so that you can move through your timeline and do all those moments first. And then you can go back and once you have the cuts made and all that, you can think of, okay, well, what sounds can really sell that cut or that transition or whatever the case may be. So that's, that's something that you can think of it in terms of, you know, like you do multiple run throughs of your timeline and little by little, you just keep adding these different uh, sonic ideas that, that you can come up with. And let's see, moving on. Uh, there's this thing right here, which is, I think is like some Foley. Yeah, some like cloth Foley sound effects. Um, and another thing that I wanted to do with this edit is to not have any dead moments. So even if there's no, I mean, w you have music playing throughout, but I didn't want it to feel like it was just, we're looking into a completely silent room or a silent moment. So everything is always going to have some kind of a layer of sound to it. Um, we have those cuts that I mentioned before that go mainly with the music. There's not much else going on sound wise, but you can see here that I start introducing another sound. Um, where is it? It's one of these. Okay, it's this one right here. So over here, we start creeping in a um, ambient sound. This is like a nature type of ambience, and it's very subtle. It's it's just as strong as like a room tone. So it's just something to fill up, again, the underbed of the scene that we're cutting into. But you can see that it doesn't start just with the scene starting right here. It actually fades up just a moment before that. So we have this swell up. And you might not even hear in the final piece, but these are all things that when put together can kind of glue things really well together and, and mesh things up. Um, other sounds that are starting to be introduced in this section is this crescendo that we talked about in the first part of this breakdown. So we're, we, we're in slow-mo, we have this very deep kind of riser that's starting to build up. And, um, and once it reaches its peak, as I mentioned before, we, we speed ramp up in the clip and that matches up with the, the sound of it peaking. And, uh, and then that very peak of it makes us cut into the wheel scene. Now in this wheel scene, we have some, some, some of the, uh, the sounds that I recorded on that day. And, and there's a whole video to how I, I, to this scene in particular with this Ferrari, we actually had to like strap a zoom recorder right next to the, uh, the tailpipes, the exhaust pipes of this car to get the sound. So that was that was a fun shoot. Um, here we we see that the tire is kicking kicking up some dust, and I I just emphasize that with a uh, little bit of rubble, like some sand pebbles that are uh, that are just shooting out. And and another thing that I didn't do here that you can do to get fancier is you can play with the panning of the sound so that it starts from the left side, but as it's getting kicked up, you can hear it more from the right side. Um, here there's a there's another there's a bit of a sound here it's another whoosh that kind of helps i forgot to mention it helps glue in this peak so it doesn't go to completely silent but it has a little bit of a tail end of another whoosh sound effect we have the car sounds here we have i have no idea what this is i'm i'm guessing it's some kind of a 
Let me solo this so I can hear what this is. Oh, okay. Interesting. I, I already forgot what I did. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Let me let me turn up the uh, volume over here. So that is one sound that is kind of like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to really describe it. You guys heard it. It's like this vortexy sound. And it has, it, it seems to have two buildups, but that's because it has its first buildup and it stays kind of steady. And then as you can see, I just animate it. I just keyframe the volume to go up. And what that does is it matches, let me just solo it so we can hear what that is doing alone. It matches that initial spin of, um, of the tire just starting to spin. So it's like that velocity gets, gets heard from that. And then it peaks to a second moment once we cut to this wider shot of what's going on. And then as it starts to die down, we start to pick it up right again as the, as the car is about to exit frame. Uh, there's another whoosh sound effect layered on top of that to motivate the pan again. And now we have the helicopter sound coming in, which is, I believe is this one, which again, I want you to notice that it starts, you know, as we lead into it, it plays through, but then it doesn't really die out right, right at the cut. There's a little bit of a tail end. Actually, I don't think that is the helicopter sound. I don't know what this is. Let me solo this again. Okay. That is gun sounds, like battle sounds. Some of these things I forget because they're so subtle that I that they don't really stand out to me, but this is again that same idea of like how we had the more country ambience in the other clip, like the more nature ambience. Now we have this battlefield kind of um, environment playing out in terms of sound so that's that's another way of just again we're we're gluing things together but we're keeping in mind what is happening in our scene so we want to add sounds that match with what we're what we're seeing or in this case not seeing it's just the environment this this battlefield that they are uh, supposedly in i think this is the helicopter let me just make sure of that wait i'm sorry it's this one and also let me unsolo this Come on. There we go. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Let me put the volume up. Okay, so there's a few things happening here. We have the helicopter being introduced a little bit before, and then it starts to swell up. As you see that as the car is approaching, we start to hear the helicopter approaching, almost as if the car is initiating that. Then we go to the cut. And now we really hear it getting louder as it supposedly is, you know, in the scene, it's like reaching over our subjects' heads. And then from there, the sound on its own, I didn't have to do any of that. It's just, again, when you're picking sounds, you have to be mindful about how you're using them. But listen to how this sound um, evolves from being just a helicopter. It's, it's still going to be a helicopter, but it, it evolves in a different type of tone of it. So. So right there, it goes from a deep rumble to a much higher pitch sound. And I knew I, I wanted to use that in some capacity. So what, it, what ends up happening is that the cut following that is this really bright light. And if you think of those old animes or whatever that had that like, psh, like sound, you know, like that very high pitch strike type of sound, that's kind of what that helicopter, the end of the helicopter sound effect reminded me of. And that's kind of what motivates this really bright flare from the reflection of the water that is shining into the lens of this scene. And we have a jump cut, and then we have the guy enter the water. A bunch of splash sound effects. I'm not going to go over them. I definitely, um, if I would have had more time, I'm, I'm, I was probably going to tweak a little bit more with the reverb to make it sound like they were actually in that room. Because um, that kind of takes me a little bit away from that. Uh, I, I might fix that soon. So anyways, from there, we actually go, there's a few things that happen. There's obviously a bunch of underwater sounds and some drones, like not the flying ones, but the, like the type of drones sound wise, they start getting introduced as soon as we enter the underground scene. And there's a, there's another trick that I'll tell you guys that I think you'll find useful is once we're underwater, if you try to like imagine how things would sound underwater, it would sound pretty 
pretty much like like oh, like, oh, like, oh, like kind of like that. So it, that's kind of where you can use the treble effect in Premiere. And you can see here, I've added keyframes to uh, to take treble out of the song, so that once we enter the water, everything quickly becomes muffled. So you can still hear the the bassier side of the of the song, but it becomes very very muffled. Uh, let me just solo just the track so you guys can hear that difference. Okay, uh, you're hearing it off of my speakers, so it's probably not the best, but hopefully you heard that difference. It goes into being a lot more muffled, and and then at the end of it, once it just the the song has a bit of a spike up or a swell up, then we we that's what we use to kind of do that wipe that we mentioned earlier, and now we're rising above water, and we're using that both the moment in the song and the treble going back up to kind of motivate our exit from that scene and into our other scene. Now there's a few other sound effects. I, I, I don't, I kind of want to cut things short a little bit, but I, uh, I do want to mention that there's a, there's a few sound effects. I'm not going to go over individual ones that transition the idea from bubbles to underwater elements to the, the pebbles or these, these smaller pieces, uh, or these chest pieces floating up. So some of the some of the effects, some of the sound effects that overlap in both scenes are actually the same sound, but that uh, like they they take on a different meaning. I guess the way you you absorb them is going to be different because of what you're seeing. So the same sound you could hear the the first part of the same sound. It makes sense that it's bubbles because you're looking at bubbles. But then because it's the sound is so vague, once we move to the chess pieces, it's still the same tail end of that sound that we've introduced. But now that we're looking at chess pieces you're thinking that those chess pieces are making that, that sound. So there's a few other things going on here that can tie both together, but that was the main idea with that, uh, which is something that you guys can take into a lot of different uh, applications, even in, in your own shorts. And then here we have not a lot of other sound effects, except for some like slow motion debris uh, sounds going on here. Then the cards flip, like I said in the beginning, are motivated by the the actual song. But then we have some foley of some some actual some some um, book pages being flipped. So it's not uh, like a deck of cards, but it's really just a uh, book being flipped. You can't tell the difference because you're looking at a deck of cards. So uh, from here we have those uh, click sounds. Nothing too fancy. And another thing that I, that are sprinkled throughout this uh, this timeline is these like impacts, these bassy impacts that either are synced up with a portion of the song that needs a little bit more punch, or a specific moment that I really want to highlight, or a cut, or anything like that. So that's that's why you'll keep seeing these throughout. Um, not not much to say here uh, except for what I said in the beginning. Here the track gets reversed, so it goes from playing normal to as soon as we hit the reverse button, everything goes reversed. So um, one other thing I'll mention about that is that you can see b that by counting the beats, you actually have a ton of control over the track and how you can really play with it. So I, I noticed that here before the drop, there was this cool uh, vocal moment. And then the beat kicks up from there. Now, I, I could have left this reverse and just start up the beat where it was, you know, the new bars and just let it run. Uh, as a normal playthrough, but I wanted to keep that section at a, at a normal speed as well so that it could have this kind of like a break moment and then we pick back up with uh, with this other shot and the rest of this stuff. So, okay, we're almost at the end here. We have the, the dial being twisted, which of course makes no sound in Premiere, but we've added like a little, some, some little gear thingies, sounds or whatever. Um, we have some more sounds, and then here we have again that moment that I really want to highlight with the the switch. That gets highlighted by really some really epic and over exaggerated sounds. We have a whoosh 
to highlight the camera movement pass you know the the when once we're passing the uh the foreground elements and then we have some just conveyor belt sounds that are moving up um and now here's another thing uh, uh, the last little thing that i'll mention about the sound design here is that um the same kind of idea with the bubbles and the chest pieces earlier it gets played here the same way we have this conveyor belt mechanism that's kind of like springing up and that same sound gets carried over to our title sequence once we see the the typing of the text so it goes from a clicking of a conveyor belt which is what the actual sound is to the the typing of the text so it's the same sound but with two different visuals you get two different ideas and then just to again bring more punch to the song at that moment there's some uh, some drone hits as soon as the text gets completed so it's like boom that's what that is and it's that way of adding impact then we have some jump cuts with the different clicks for the font styles and then it goes into the final logo which is matched up. You can see that there's another cut here. I've shortened the song and I've, I've counted the, the beats. And then I just picked up the last two beats of the track where there's that final bum, bum. And then uh, that last hit of the song wasn't strong enough. So in here I added a riser and then we have uh, a, a hit for the second part that the logo goes in. That's it. That's pretty much all of the uh, ideas that went into the sound design of this um i did want to cut this short just because i was i didn't want to spend too much time and every little bit of a detail but hopefully with this general overview it has given you enough ideas to uh experiment on on your own i don't know why i'm still there we go let me cut to the camera all right so what i'm going to do now i know it's been uh quite a long live stream uh, i mean initially these were supposed to be 10 to 15 minutes then i kind of gave up and i was like whatever they'll be 30 minutes this one has passed over an hour. Definitely doesn't feel that way. Hopefully you guys have been having fun along with me and you're learning some new things, including that Obama's going to have a TV show. Like that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Um, all right. So we're going to switch it to our live chat. And uh, I, I want to, I just want to get a chance to talk to you guys a little bit before I log off. If you have any kind of questions um, for, for what we just covered, any questions at all, anything that you want to talk about, I am here for you guys for just a little bit longer. Um, oh, nice. And 2662 in the beginning of the live stream said, you're the best. Greetings from Venezuela. That is that is awesome. I, I love seeing where people are commenting from. That's always so interesting to me. Uh, Venezuela is a really great place. Uh, it's unfortunate what's happening there right now. Uh, I, I hope they get out of that whole mess with their own uh, government. But you know, it is a beautiful place, full of beautiful people. Love Venezuela. Um, let's see. Color, can you show us color grading for video? Says Kanam Gem Media PVT LTD. It's a long name. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I have a bunch of tutorials. If you guys want to learn color grading, uh, just, just the basics. I, I wouldn't call myself a super expert colorist that works in, in Hollywood. But I've done, I've, I've graded uh, my, my share of, of videos, my own short films many, many times. So if you want to see my workflow when it comes to that stuff, I have a ton of tutorials that you can find on my channel. And, uh, and I will definitely uh, be doing an episode in the editing workshop that's coming up. So one of the final episodes of that workshop will include color grading. And, uh, and that's something that I would hope to uh, see you guys there for as well. I'm, the trailer that you've watched, the trailer that we've broke down in this whole video, it's all for the editing workshop that is going to be premiering literally like less than a week. Uh, the first episode comes out on June 2nd. And I am beyond excited for that. I mean, that is going to be such a such a fun experience. I've, there's a lot of things that I've been wanting to share for a while. A lot of little tricks here and there and, and edits. We've covered just a, just a surface in this live stream in a very broad way. And we're going to go really in-depth to not just the techniques that we saw today, uh, many other techniques, some of the theory behind uh, editing, editing for emotion, editing for story, you know, uh, editing to a certain flow, how to achieve a certain flow. There's just like a lot of stuff that we'll go into and color grading will, uh, will definitely, will definitely be one of them. James VFX says, hello. Hello, James VFX. Uh, people are saying clean, awesome edit. Nice. I appreciate that. 
tight. That was that was a fun edit. Um, Pema Gen Genhang says this was amazing Chris missed half of the live stream but I'm going to watch it again thank you thank you honestly the, it's it's great I, I'm gonna try to keep these more consistent I wanted to start these at 6 p.m. started this one a little bit later but I'm glad you still were able to catch some of it and uh, and I appreciate you watching it from the beginning afterwards um, Tara Stone asks great live stream my question is where do you get your sound effects from and most importantly the risers good good question um what i'm gonna do is uh, by the end of this live stream i'm gonna update a link in the description to where you can find a bunch of really great sound effects um it it's um uh, it's almost like a stock footage website where you pay a subscription you can download a bunch of sounds i'm not sponsored i'm just what i've used um but instead of stock footage, it's sound effects. So you pay for a subscription, you can download a bunch of sound effects. And I thought it's it's a really great solution for that. For the specific sounds that I've used in this project, a lot of it comes from um, Mo Motion Pulse from Video Copilot, a great, great library. Came out a few years back or something like that, but it still holds uh, pretty well. Uh, some of the sounds are a little bit overused, so you, you wanna layer them in a creative way that doesn't sound like everyone else. Um, there's another pack that I was using called Archetype, I think, which is with all the risers and, and all of that. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I do when it comes to sound. Good question, though. Good question. All right, any other last questions um, before before I go? Ali Kawaja. <laughs> I'm probably butchering names here. Sorry, but it says, hi, Chris. Gavin Bauper Be Bau Bau says, I'll definitely have to rewatch this. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching and rewatching. <laughs> All right. So I think that is pretty much it. This was a crazy one because there's like so many things happening that I wanted to try out for the first time live. I didn't even have time to practice any of this because uh, my, my schedule has been just really just kind of crazy if you guys are interested in any of the songs that you heard in this live stream or in pretty much all my other videos uh you can find them in uh there we go just kind of trying to cut back to oh i forgot to do something so i want to recommend something i want to recommend um and i had this cool graphic prepared oh there we go there it is um so I want to recommend a book to you guys since I know I've been getting a lot of questions as far as like what I what I read and, and what I do in my spare time. Well, reading books is a great hobby. And the book that I'm currently reading right now, it's not around me. I should have probably prepared better for this. But it's called How to, uh, no, the, what's the name of it? The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. I can't believe I was blanking out on that. Uh, it's a book that has literally changed my way of thinking, the way I actually um, internalize thoughts. I'm much more careful about how I think, and I uh, try to omit negative thoughts as much as as possible. So that's a book that I think is really helpful. Uh, I'm going to try to do more recommendations, podcasts that I listen to, books in the future, um, upcoming um, podcasts, um, live streams. One other thing that I'm missing that I want to mention, and then I promise you, it's uh, it's done because it's almost like over an hour. Um, there's a new free pack for you guys. So let me see if I can pull this up real quick. So last week I released the free grunge texture pack. Uh, and there was a bunch of uh, paint assets that, uh, that, I, that I've collected. And this is, uh, this is just like the second part of it, I guess. Sorry, let me see if I, okay. So as you can see here, there's just uh, different backgrounds to um, that kind of complete the other pack. And if you guys didn't get the other pack, that probably means that you signed up a little bit too late or it could be in the promotions tab in, um, in your Gmail account if you have that. But I'm gonna send another one of these out. These are new textures that I haven't released yet. Uh, so I'm gonna be sending these out right after this live stream or tomorrow morning 
And, uh, and unfortunately, if you missed the first one, that was it. Emails only get sent out once. So that should be pretty good incentive for you guys to sign up uh, for these, um, for this mailing list. It's essentially just a VIP list that I, um, I give out free stuff to every single week. So for that, you can follow the link in the description or you can go to chriscart.com slash free and you can sign up there. I forgot to mention this. It's probably really late and no one's watching the stream by now, but, um, do sign up because once this email is sent out, there won't be a second one. And then eventually these assets will be for sale on the website. So if you want to get them for free, sign up for this email list and you'll be getting these things for free every single week. So just wanted to mention that um, if, oh, okay, I'm not trying to recommend that, but <laughs> I mean, do I do recommend that. All right. <laughs> this was uh, quite an unusual stream. Hopefully it wasn't too all over the place. It's kind of crazy just trying to speak and do all this and still control everything. It's a little challenging. I might need to get some help for these in the future, but I do want to improve with every single one of these. So hopefully you saw an improvement from the last one and hopefully the next one will be even more exciting. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. So anyways, guys, uh, I will end this now. If you have any last questions. Okay. People are saying thanks for the live stream. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I will see you in the next one next week, next Friday, hopefully 6 p.m. All right, guys, take care.